one of the most common leaks you'll get from a toilet is where you have water dripping down from the bottom of your tank. Now the leak can be dripping from a few different locations, but usually it's around the surfaces where the tank actually mounts on and attaches to the bowl. This type of leak can be a slow drip like I have here, but if gone unattended for a long period of time, it can damage your flooring, subflooring, or even your first floor ceiling if this toilet's on the second level. So let's dive in. I'll show you a few things to do right away to get the leaks stopped and possibly to temporarily or permanently fix it without buying any parts. And if those quick fixes don't work for you, I'll show you what parts to get and how to install them to make sure the tank to bowl interface is secure and watertight. So here's a look at my issue is I have water that is traveling along the the tank here and then dripping from this corner. This does serve as a good demonstration. Just because you see the drip here, that does not mean that's the source, right? This is just the lowest point for which the water travels before it drips off onto your floor or hopefully into the bucket. You can also see a little bit of water here on this lip from the bowl. So most likely my leak is coming from common sources, which would be the attachment bolts and the associated gaskets or the larger gasket that goes between the actual tank and the bowl. First things first, since we're DIYers, we're probably not that comfortable with toilets and we have a leak. We got a big tank of water right here. If we start messing around and we make that leak worse, now we have an entire tank of water that's going to want to go directly on your floor and that is no good. So getting the water out of your tank is easy. I have a shutoff valve here that is a quarter turn shutoff valve, so we want to turn that off, which will shut down the water to our fill valve. So when we do a flush, now the tank isn't trying to refill. Then you can take the tank lid off and set it to the side. And you will notice there's still quite a bit of water in the tank itself. So you can use a small old sponge, a larger sponge, towel, turkey baser, whatever, whatever you need to do to get that water out, just to make sure we don't have any water leaking on the floor. So now with the water removed, you can see there is a mounting bolt here and then one over here. So this tank has two mounting bolts. Sometimes you'll see a third right here on the back side. Those mounting bolts are critical for a good seal and holding the tank onto the bowl, but are also the most common source of leaks. Then you have a black gasket and that is critical. This needs to be in good shape and needs to be compressed where it's a watertight surface and not letting water out. So with, the, with your flathead screwdriver, and then just a crescent wrench on the bottom side. You can hold the nut on the bottom side and then just tighten the bolt, which this one is a little loose, but you do not want to over tighten. Remember your tank and your bowl are made out of porcelain, which can stand up for decades and decades and decades, but are very brittle. You would not want to over tighten your bolts because that could break your porcelain, and then you'd be installing a new toilet. Then if you did find one of these was loose and you were able to compress that gasket back down, you could fill the tank back up and check to see if your leak is fixed. Now you don't need any parts and you at least have it temporarily fixed. Now, if you tighten up those bolts, also make sure that you have clearance on the back of your tank to the wall. Sometimes when a toilet is installed, depending on where the mounting flange is on the floor, the tank can actually be pressing against the wall. So what that interference means is when you tighten down your mounting bolts down here, you might not be able to actually get a good seal because the wall is pushing the tank and not allowing it to sit flush on the bowl. So if your bolts are tight, you have clearance, but you don't like the look of your gaskets and they've just been in service for years and years, it's probably time to change them. But you can pick up a simple universal kit from Fluid Master at a hardware store, or in the description of this video, I'll show you a link. You can grab these off Amazon and pretty easily rebuild all of the different gasket materials, which can crack and age over time. So let me show you how to remove the tank and then we'll install all this hardware. 
First, we'll go ahead and undo our water line, but make sure you have a bucket or some kind of pan underneath that because you will have a little water leaking out. Then I have two mounting bolts, right? So I'll put the crescent wrench on the nut on the bottom, and then I'll take my flathead screwdriver and loosen up the bolts on the left-hand side, removing that bolt, and then on the same on the right-hand side. Once the nuts are off, then I can remove the tank from the bolt. So here's what we're looking at. Overall, it's not in bad shape. For me, my leak was coming from just that one bolt being loose. So what I'll do is I'll remove the old gasket here, just prying it off. So there is the old gasket again, not, not really in too bad a shape. And then we have our nut for our overfill tube. We'll keep all that in place. I'll back out these mounting bolts because I want to swap those out. And there you can see a little bit coming off on my fingers of the actual gasket is starting to break down, but really that was a pretty solid seal as well. And overall, the pan heads of the, the bolts are not in too bad shape. So you can start to see some corrosion depending on the materials your mounting bolts are made out of. All right, I do want to know your main seal here, which this is going to be what's going to be sealing your tank to your bowl. This universally should fit the vast majority of tanks. For instance, this one, it will fit around and you want to press that all the way around that nut as well to make sure it's in place. Now, if you have a Kohler or Gerber, Fluidmaster does make a different kit that will account for the small variations in the seals for Kohler and Gerber toilets. So just note that to make sure you get the right parts and you make this a one trip job. So for the mounting bolts from the top sides, because these are pan head, right, they have a large surface area, you do not need washers. So we'll just put the gaskets all the way up to the pan head for both of these. Then we'll pass those through from the top side. So you have two different options here to mount. The kit comes with two different thicknesses for the nuts. The thick nut was going to go on the bottom, and that's what's going to hold it to the bottom of the bowl. The thin nut, you could place a washer on your bolt and then tighten that thin nut prior to mounting the tank on the bowl. So that's going to compress down the gasket, and then actually this nut, the tightness of this nut, is going to determine the compression on that gasket. I don't prefer that method and it is completely optional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these bolts loosely held and then I'm going to mount this tank getting a good seal on the bowl and then from the bottom side I'm going to use the gasket goes on first from the bottom then it goes washer and then it goes the thicker nut. So that's the order of the parts that you'd want to put on from the bottom side. And then that's what we're going to tighten down to get everything secure so we can test it out to make sure it's watertight. Always best practice when you have a seal versus a flat surface to make sure you clean that flat surface. There's no debris, there's nothing on that surface that could compromise the seal. Once you get it clean, then you can go ahead and set your tank back in place, passing the bolts through the mounting holes in the bowl. Then you'll do the gasket first, flat washer, then the thick nut, and you'll tighten it back and forth, moving from left to right, making sure you're not tightening only one side and then moving on to the other. That will create issues and will promote a leak later on. Do not over tighten, just tighten to where the tank is secure and it doesn't wiggle anymore. Last step is to reinstall the water line, and now we're ready to test out our tank. Now remember, you just changed out a bunch of seals. You're probably doing this for the first time, so we're going to turn the water on, but have a towel and a bucket ready, and also be ready to turn off that water quickly, just in case you install something incorrectly. So you'll turn the water on, but I do like to make sure I'm monitoring it from the bottom side. 
and you'll quickly see if you have any drops of water start to form where you might need to tighten up those mounting bolts a little bit more or even possibly your water line. So if those seals or gaskets were getting old for you, there's probably a good chance that your fill valve, some of the other tubes, your flapper are also getting to the end of their serviceable life. Check out this video right here and I'll show you how to do a complete rebuild on all those components for as little as $20. And I do this on all my rental properties as soon as I purchase them. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.